Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. Brethren, when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, and through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once and for all into the holy place, taking not the blood of goats and the calves, but his own blood, and thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And the Gospel today is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 through 38. At that time there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he shouldn't see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And inspired by the Spirit, he came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising of many in Israel. And for a sign that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, and she was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years from her virginity, and as a widow till she was eighty-four. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping and fasting and praying night and day. And coming up at the very hour, she gave thanks to God and spoke of him to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. In the Orthodox Church, when we have a major feast, sometimes immediately following that feast, we will have a secondary feast, kind of like an echo. When we think about, for example, the baptism of our Lord that just happened in January, the day immediately following the baptism of our Lord is the synaxis of John the Forerunner, the one who baptized our Lord. So today in the Orthodox Church, since yesterday, on February 2nd, we had the presentation of our Lord in the temple. And when Mary and Joseph brought him to the temple, they encountered two people, the righteous Simeon, the prophet, and also the righteous Anna. Those two are the ones that we remember today in our services for the day. So they are the synaxis of Simeon and Anna is what we remember today. Now, if you are familiar with the readings that were done yesterday, and the one especially in the gospel that was done today, you might realize that it sounded familiar, and indeed it was familiar. Yesterday was a larger reading, having a couple of more verses before the start of today's, and then ending a little bit afterwards. Well, that's fine, because that was the presentation of our Lord. But today, since we remember Simeon and Anna, we omit the particular passages that have to do with just the particulars of their arrival or what they offered or so on and so forth. And all we do is we have the mention of Simeon in his pursuit of the Messiah and then also Anna who uh, and through her own devotion shows what kind of a holy person that she is. And so since we remember both of those people, we keep the passages that mention both and the others are left for another day. So when we hear it, again, we see that their lives are consecrated and dedicated to worshiping God. They are so in tune with who God is through their prayer, through their fasting, through their righteousness, 
that when he is arriving, even though he's just a babe, 40 days old, even though just a little, little, little baby, they recognize him for who he is. Their eyes are opened when the rest of the world's eyes are not. And so they are able to behold the Lord's Christ in his fullness, even though he is just a baby of 40 days. So that's the kind of devotion and love that they had. May we in our own lives develop the same kind of love and devotion so that we can see God clearly, as clearly as he will let us. So that when we see the beautiful things around us, a sunrise or the innocent laugh of a child or the sweetness of a puppy or something along those lines, when we see those things, may our hearts not just be touched, but may they also leap for joy and recognition of the beauty of God's creation. Because it is through what God has given us that all these beautiful things come to be. Simeon and Anna understood this. In their pursuit of the Lord's Christ, they were able to see him even though the rest of the world could not. This, this is a message to us all. Not that they're better than us. Not that we're some kind of Gnostic group where they had hidden secrets that helped them to see and we don't so we can't see. Nothing of that type but instead a pure devotion and willingness to serve God through all things, self-sacrifice, through humility, through love, through the passion of following God, not following the passions of this world. When we have those kinds of things, then we too will be like those two, the prophets, Simeon and Anna. And through their example, may we live in a way that is righteous and holy for our God. And may God bless you and your family, those whom you love, today and always, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Have a great day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.